you're watching news made easy i'm on india chakravarti the neat pg counseling process is going to begin uh, from the 12th of january and not just junior doctors medical students but you and i should heave a sigh of relief because of that why because without that process doctors can practice mbbs bachelor those with bachelor's uh, degrees can practice as doctors but they cannot become specialists they cannot get more experience and go up the ladder of uh, of uh, medical science and we need to as a country as a nation bump up the number of specialists that we have and i'm going to begin with one uh, single data point we have about 41 crore uh, children in india and by children i mean those between the age of 0 to 14 years i'm not taking up to 18 years how many pediatricians do you think we have uh, 27000 just 27000 that means we have one pediatrician one child specialist for every 15000 children in this uh, country and by children again as i said i don't mean those who are below 18 i mean those who are below 14 years of age right one for every 15000 how does that compare uh, with some a country like uk for instance in uk there's one pediatrician for every 1100 children between the age of 0 to 14 so that's the ratio and that's a huge huge difference and uh, this is just pediatricians think of uh, something like cardiologists and you know india is one of the countries where there's a lot of heart disease related risks a lot of people have it and we have just 5500 cardiologists or heart specialists in this country according to the uh, cardiologist society of india just 5500 that means about third for one cardiologist for approximately 30000 people in this country right and uh, if you look at the number of uh, cardiovascular disease related deaths in this country uh, in the last year in 2020 about 48 lakh people are estimated to have died of cardiovascular disease that's the kind of ratios that we are talking about these appalling lack of specialists Uh, is for every kind of specialization and i'm going to take some data from which has been compiled by the web portal ken from government data and from data which has been uh, released by various medical associations various specialist associations and uh, i'm going to tell you how what is the percentage of availability of certain kinds of specialists in india uh, right um, and i'm looking at what we require and how many we have gynecologists and obstetricians right we have just 23% of what we need anesthesiologists who are required for surgeries just 17% of the number we need uh, in terms of radiologists right? any kind of you know tests various kinds of tests that you need you need radiologists only 15% of what we need and i said the number of pediatricians is appalling just 14% of what india needs and the important point is that if you are if you live in a metro you probably not face this shortage because most of these specialists are actually concentrated in india cities and in metros when it comes to villages obviously the situation is much much worse even in government run uh, community health centers the vacancies haven't been so there are posts which have been sanctioned but they haven't been filled again i'm going to take data which has been compiled by ken and also look at data which is government data and i'm going to tell you uh, the the number of vacancies of fic- of posts which have been sanctioned they should be there it's not even what is required it's just that these have been sanctioned and they're not there 68.4% of <coughs> sanctioned posts are vacant when it comes to surgeons you look at obstetricians and gynecologists 56.1% are vacant in uh, amongst physicians in general nearly 67% of positions are unfilled pediatricians 63% are unfilled and overall in terms of all specialists 63% of positions which are sanctioned are vacant right now these are sanctioned positions which are vacant in community health centers in rural india and government data also tells us what is required how many do we need and what is the shortfall and again if i look at uh, surgeons there's a shortfall of nearly 79% obstetricians and uh, gynecologists 
that's almost 70% shortfall. If I look at physicians in general, there's a 78% shortfall in terms of pediatrician. Again, more than 78% shortfall. And if one takes all specialists in rural India, in community health centers, there's a 76% shortfall of what is required. That is why it is, it is so essential that we get more specialists. And that is why this delay in, first a delay, a postponement of the NEET PG exams and then a delay even after the exams are held in the counselling process without which they cannot be allocated to medical colleges, private or government medical colleges cannot uh, become, you know, uh, take up their specialization, start studying for it without that and the, all of this got delayed and uh, uh, that's the huge problem and if you think about it, there were 45,000 people, young doctors, who had cleared their uh, NEET PG exams, who were ready to start postgraduate degree, start count, uh, in September when they took that exam. But it's only in January that they're finally going to be allocated their specialities and subspecialties and the medical colleges they are going to go to. And there's another big, uh, equally big reason, I think, why this was so dangerous, this delay was so dangerous. And that too in the middle of COVID. That's because, you know, in the Indian hospital system, it's junior doctors, mostly resident doctors, interns and resident doctors, who are the foot soldiers of the medical system. Consultants come, they uh, look at a patient, advise what has to be done, but ultimately the last mile of uh, giving medication, checking whether the medication is essentially the nursing system and the resident doctor system. When it comes to changing medicines, reacting to symptoms, changes monitoring them it is all the resident doctor system which does it and this is not just India it's the way it is everywhere in the world whether it is wards whether it is ICUs whether it's emergencies and casualty what we call casualty it's the resident junior doctors who actually handled handle final patient care now the typical career path of a medical student who doesn't want to just uh, uh, start practicing after a bachelor's degree is to um, start studying for their postgraduate and for that they have to take this neat pg exam and then there's counseling according to which they get allotted certain medical colleges uh, depending on their rank and they can choose their specialization depending on again their rank and their results and the typical career path is that once they get that thing they start as juniors as a junior residents and they have to go study for three years right and then they can take their postgraduate exam and then they uh, can specialize, they can start practicing as full-time uh, consultants and uh, specialize, right? And uh, for the first two years, these junior doctors have their nose to the grind. In fact, most of the three years. It's only towards the end of the third year that uh, they're given some time off to study for their final year exams. And well, look what has happened. Because of NEET PG, what happened is that a large number of hospitals actually had a shortfall of first year junior residents because once these people took their exam uh, hospitals no longer wanted to hire them because they felt that as soon as counseling would start these people would leave they'd quit and go to another medical college or a teaching hospital and uh, they'll specialize in something else they'll start so there's no point in hiring these people so most of these 45,000 people were actually who could have helped during the covid period were sitting at home and the second year residents, mostly second year residents and those who were not going to take their PG or hadn't qualified for need, these are the only people who were available. So there was a sudden huge shortage and that's what has happened throughout the COVID period. Resident doctors have been running 24 hour shifts, 100, 110 work, uh, you know, hour weeks and they're exhausted and that is why that anger bubbled out and went out onto the streets. We saw those protests, the strikes. And uh, these strikes would have continued if the Supreme Court had actually not intervened and made sure that the counselling process had started. And it's only when the promises were given that the strike was withdrawn. And we are very lucky that the third wave, this Omicron wave, which still now is 5 to 10% hospitalization, but you know, if it spreads, if it rips through India's population, there'll be many more hospitalizations taking place. Even if they're not very serious, hospitals will be full. And that's when you'll need resident doctors. So in a sense, we are extremely lucky that the Supreme Court intervened and in a sense forced the government to act and start this process. So 
we are lucky that the third wave has come only after this has happened and it's a in a sense it's a huge positive not just for as i said junior doctors who want to do the pg and specialize but for you and me so that's the show today keep watching news click like our video and share it as well